AVM embolization using Onyx 18. February 2012. The surgeon and narrator, Dr. Michael Horowitz. Here we see a base catheter in the left internal carotid artery. An arteriographic run is done, showing a tangle of blood vessels in the left frontal lobe. This is the arteriovenous malformation. This will be removed surgically after embolization is carried out. Here a small microcatheter is advanced through the blood vessels. It will be sequentially placed into each of the blood vessels that is supplying the arteriovenous malformation. Here the catheter is being advanced over a small micro wire into one of the anterior cerebral artery branches that is feeding the arteriovenous malformation. At the bottom of the screen, the tip of the catheter can be seen being advanced over the wire. This is a road mapped view that allows the surgeon to steer the wire and catheter around the various bends in the blood vessels to reach the arteriovenous malformation. The dense cluster of vessels in the center of your screen between 12 and 1 o'clock or 12 and 2 o'clock is the arteriovenous malformation. It is fed primarily by the anterior cerebral artery and its many branches and partially by the left middle cerebral artery and its branches. Once the catheter is in position, we will do an arteriographic run through the catheter to see if any normal brain is opacifying along with the AVM. We then will inject a medication, lidocaine or, or amitol, to see whether or not there are any neurologic deficits in the patient. If there are no neurologic deficits, we will continue with the embolization by injecting Onyx 18 into the feeding vessels and the AVM. Here's a view. The catheter has been advanced quite distally. The AVM only is opacifying. Once again, the AVM is opacifying. We've determined that our catheter position is good for this portion of the embolization. We will now go ahead and begin to inject the Onyx 18, which is the black material that is appearing on the screen. This is a liquid that when it contacts blood, goes from a liquid to a solid state. It is dark because it is mixed with tantalum, which appears under x-rays. Here, portion of the AVM is being infiltrated with the Onyx 18, and these vessels will permanently be sealed off. This will make the surgical resection easier as there will be less blood flowing to the arteriovenous malformation at the time of surgical resection. Once we are satisfied with the embolization of this feeding vessel to the AVM, we will remove the catheter. The catheter has been removed and a fresh catheter is now being advanced over wire into another vessel that feeds the arteriovenous malformation. We will advance it into another branch of the anterior cerebral artery that gives blood supply to the arteriovenous malformation. 
That branch also will be tested with lidocaine and amitol. And if the patient does not show a neurologic deficit, we'll move on to embolize that branch and the supply to the AVM from it using the Onyx 18. Here the catheter is being advanced over a wire and it is passed distally through the artery towards the AVM. Once again, the wire is distal in the blood vessels supplying the AVM, and the catheter, whose tip you see, is being advanced over the wire into the vessels supplying the AVM, trying to get as close to the AVM as possible. An arteriographic run is done, showing filling of the AVM, and the patient again will be tested with lidocaine and amitol. Embolization now will be carried out with Onyx 18. Here you see the onyx exiting the catheter and filling the arteriovenous malformation. Once again, the dark material is the onyx. The injection is done slowly in an attempt to try to get the onyx to travel out distal into the AVM to seal as many blood vessels as possible to make the surgery easier and safer. As we inject more onyx, you can see the outline of the AVM as it fills with the material. Some of the areas within the AVM that are rounder in appearance are most likely small aneurysms within the nidus of the arteriovenous malformation. These are often the sources of bleeding when an AVM hemorrhages. Here we're sealing off the vessel that is feeding this portion of the AVM. We will soon pull the catheter more proximally to embolize some additional vessels that we had identified. The catheter is now being slowly pulled more proximally. It will be gently readvanced, and additional onyx is injected, which will enter another portion of the AVM. You can see this injection shows that the portion of the AVM that was embolized no longer fills with blood 
while areas that were not embolized do fill with blood. Here we see the AVM has been significantly reduced in size and volume. The catheter is being advanced into another vessel. This was the AVM prior to embolization. In total, we embolized six individual vessels that were supplying this AVM. The image you this is the AVM prior to embolization. The area within the circle. Once again, a lateral view showing the AVM prior to embolization. The dense tangle of blood vessels represents the arteriovenous malformation. The circle shows much of the AVM prior to embolization. This is the AVM after embolization. The volume has been significantly reduced. This is an anterior posterior view, and the circle shows the residual arteriovenous malformation that will not be embolized. The arrows point to the onyx material within portions of the AVM and feeding vessels. We have embolized both anterior cerebral supply and middle cerebral supply to the lesion. Here's a lateral view of the AVM after embolization. Primary supply now comes from one middle cerebral artery branch. The dark material with the arrows represents the onyx.